tonight. Uh, I know it's Thanksgiving week and this is a, a slow time. Many people are trying to enjoy it with their families. Um, some people are alone and um, uh, others are out, you know, maybe seeing some uh, friends they haven't seen in a while. Uh, but the truth is, folks, it is time to remember to be thankful to the one who gives everything. That is the Almighty, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he is the giver of all good blessings, and he's given us his son, Yeshua Jesus, to be a blessing to each one of us as we move forward in these last end times. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for everything that you give, Lord. Thank you for all of the amazing things that you've given we don't deserve. And I ask tonight, Lord, in the name above every name, Yeshua Jesus, that you would bless this show to be an honor and glorifying to thy name. And Father, you said that if we were to lift you up, that you would draw all men unto you. Lord, please draw your people. Draw everybody who would hear your voice right now. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I find it very interesting. A uh, quick note, if you didn't get a chance last week to check out Benjamin's blog, you need to go to that Um it's uh he's hosting it on um oh i'm sorry here let me look that up for everybody it's a uh, getter i believe it is uh and i don't want to misrepresent it. i'll re-put the link back down in there again to his website where he posts news and and the reason um i want to do talk to you about that is because there are some very important things that he's had on that here lately and the one thing that he's had on that here, and I, I listen, I am already flagged by YouTube, okay, and already, you know, in the danger of being cut from this platform. That's why if you ever, we don't show up here, don't forget, we are on Rumble too. Just go over there and check us out, over, and we'll be right there um, after we get cut. But um, we try, it's on Getter, there it is, and, and I'll post the link again, Getter. The reason it's important is he posted the link to the video and just even saying it'll probably get me flagged, but, um, it's about the people that are just dying suddenly and, um, you gotta go watch it. Uh, it is a must see folks. They are trying to take us out one way or another. And it, this is just the beginning. This is not going to end. The, the The progression of the last days does not uh, all of a sudden get really bad and then great again. Well, when it gets great again, it's because it's over. And that's it. And we're with the Lord forever. And that'll be a wonderful day. But it continues to get worse and worse and worse at an attempt to extinguish the people of God. And so you've got to go out there and watch this video. It's a must watch. Um, and, and it's sad and it's heartbreaking. And it's interesting how they really started to discover how these people were dying so quickly. And it's anyways, I'll leave that up to go check it out. Um, and, and we'll put the link back to his program there. It's the one by Stu uh, Peters there that did it. So check that out, please. And even just saying those things get you flagged as, you know, um, super spreaders of misinformation. That's the new terminology they get now. So they can come and lock you up for trying to tell the truth. Um, but the here is a bit of truth. Everything you've noticed, everything we're trying to do today is faced is, is basically it's a focus on the supernatural. And it's not just only the TV shows and the movies and all that. Um, but it is this thought in our in our society that somehow we can become like God by extending our lives past 120 years, uh, past the mark, which God said, hey, this is how long you're going to live. And we want to become like God. God. And and it's not now is not only that, but now they're trying to intermix um, the creation into it. Because remember, the Bible says that they they will worship the creation over the creator. Okay, it's in Romans. 
and and also all of the things God calls an abomination, with homosexuality and different things like that, they are now putting into these superheroes and all that stuff. And you saw Disney's big movie just crashed because there are still people in the world who think that stuff's sick and they don't want to see it. And it's everything is focused on the supernatural along with this intense uh news releases uh, that's happened over the period of time here in the last few years of this thought that there is now a you know ufos that there's been all these sightings there's you know all these things and listen folks i do not believe any of this is gobbledygook okay i believe this is the devil the enemy the that and this is his minions and he is working in the supernatural in these last days to deceive the very people of god setting us up to believe another gospel other than the one that has been received. And and you got to be aware of these things because it's going to be more, become more and more prevalent that you understand the truth because what's going to happen one day when all of a sudden the news says, hey, we've been visited. And someone says, oh, we came long time ago. You know, we seeded this earth millions of years ago and blah, 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 all this stuff. If you're not grounded in the very word of God, then you could be deceived and say, oh, it was all a lie. When the truth was, the Lord has been warning us of this time in these last days for thousands of years, and we're not going to be able to say, God, you didn't tell us. He's been telling us that the devil will be let loose in these last days to work unbelievable stuff. Folks, we already know that there will be supernatural things happening in the end of times. We know that there will be a statue that's going to speak, fire that's called down from heaven, and 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 more and more. And, and yet Jesus said that even greater works that he did that we will do, that God's people will do. And listen, we can look at the first century church, and we see powerful works. P, uh, Peter's shadow healing people. That was amazing. But I didn't see anyone walking on water yet. I never saw any. G, Jesus' work still, that, that prophecy is still yet to fully come. In these last days, we saw glimpses of it in the early church, but now we are going to see it in the last days. So everything in the word of God is supernatural. And yet the devil, the reason he's doing this is because he's a counterfeiter against the supernatural. So he's got his own supernatural, when I mean against the true supernatural, so he counterfeits it. Last week, Brother Benjamin uh, talked about it in the signs and the stars. There is a biblical astronomy. Uh, that tells a story of God. It's been known about since Seth and his children back in the Bible before the flood. It was written about by Josephus. Uh, It's been known about forever. And yet then the devil comes in with astrology and everything that's counterfeit. And yet God's very word said that his heavens declare his glory. There is a sign up there. There is the the whole plan of salvation is, is contained in the stars. And God mapped it out. You know, and and so we get hung up in the wrong things, unfortunately, when it comes to the supernatural. And then the pastors come to the churches and they don't even preach about the supernatural in this book. And, and all we see is that right now today that's happening on the world scene. And we saw as Brother Benjamin was talking about the other week. Now, I, I got to get the link to this by Tim Cohen on the Antichrist and the cup of tea. Listen, I'm not saying that that's necessarily that uh, King Charles and everything is definitely the AC. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. I've known about that for over 20 years. Uh, I remember back when I first learned about about that, maybe in 99, 1999, right when I was converted. And I thought, well, we'll see how it's shaped out and there's a video tim cohen just recently did on this uh he does through all his evidence of why he thinks charles is is the ac um and it may very well be and there's good evidence to it and and it may be somebody else i don't know but what i do know is right now is that the devil and his minions see god okay if any of you hear fans of Dr. Michael Heiser. I am. I I love the Naked Bible podcast. I I love it. Um, I like Dr. Heiser. I don't always agree with everything he says, um, but I I appreciate the work that he's done on trying to take more complicated subjects and dumb them down. Uh, I've I've enjoyed his stuff. And, And, you know, folks, you don't have to agree with everything to enjoy something someone does. The Bible says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So if somebody says something you don't like, let that go. Try to find the good thing. So don't, don't, please don't message me and tell me, 
why I should or shouldn't. Okay, I, I, I listen, then I study, and then I examine against the word. Okay, and you got to find out if it's true according to the word. But the truth is, Dr. Heiser wrote a great book um, about the divine council. Okay, and uh, and and it, it's it's called Unseen Realm. And there's a sort of a kind of a simplified version of it called supernatural, but it's about how God works in a divine council. It's not that he needs counsel. It's that he works in a divine council and the devil also works in a divine council of his minions, just like God does of his. And if you don't know anything or you've never really looked or seen this divine council, you can take a glimpse of it in First Kings chapter 22. Uh, I'll just look at, just show it to you quickly here. This is one, just one uh, instance of the Bible looking into to the divine council in heaven. Uh, First Kings chapter 22, starting in verse 17, says this, And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, They have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? This is the story of Jehoshaphat with Ahab. When Ahab was there and, they were, and Jehoshaphat said, Hey, you know, could we, is it possible that we could sit? you know, go and see and talk to the Lord about whether we should go up to Ramoth Gilead to reclaim it out of the king of Syria's hand. And so Jos, and so Ahab's like, yeah, he gets his 400 or so. It's roughly about that number of false prophets. And they get together and they're just prophesying wonderful things like that. And so Jehoshaphat, being a man of God, is like, yeah, you know, I, is there anybody here that hears from Yahweh? And so Ahab's like, well, there's this Micaiah, but I don't like him. He never says anything good about me. See, he only wanted to hear what made him feel good. He never wanted to hear the truth. Ahab wasn't interested in the truth. He was interested in the, in, in, in lies. And that's what his false prophets were giving him. And so we're looking right here into the divine council. And so Ahab says to him, you know, did I not tell thee you would not... He would prophesy no good concerning me. And then so then Micaiah continues, and this is what he says. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him and on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on this manner. So this is, you're looking into the divine counsel, okay, of God and his His holy uh, celestial beings up there with him, uh, you know, that are part of his counsel. These are other Elohim, okay? The Elohim is a generic term that can be used for any uh, heavenly being, okay? It is also used for God, but it's also used for other little G's gods. And so here God is sitting in his counsel and he's some would call this in the pagan world maybe or a pantheon okay but this is god sitting in there and and he's people you know say hey they're trying to figure out how how are we going to bring about the the death of of uh of, of Ahab. And so he gets a suggestion from one person. They're like, well, how about we, we do this? And another person says, well, how about we do this? Okay. And then, then came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so. So here God's taking suggestions. Now, does the Lord need counsel? Absolutely not. God works in a council because that's how he works with us. It's in his word. He, he, he Does God need you? Does God need me? No. How does he reach other people? He uses us. He allows us to be a part of his team, a part of what he wants to do. This is the way our heavenly father has chosen to work. And I, I could get into a deeper topic of why this is, but it does with his character and how he's just, and he will put an end to sin one day. And we will say, we people will look and say he was just in everything he did and the way he works in a council, meaning he could be overbearing and do whatever he wants, but he decides to work. And here he is in this council and he says, go be that lying spirit. 
and that's what that's what they wanted. See, it's not that God was creating a lying, you know, be a liar. That's not who God is. The Bible says specifically that I will reward you with the fruit of your thoughts. That's what God said. So if you want to hear a lying spirit, you're going to get it. And so they got exactly what they wanted to hear. And so God sends out there and you got a glimpse into what the divine, a piece of the divine counsel. And, and so the devil here is trying to counterfeit the Lord's divine counsel with his own divine counsel right now today. And you see that in the leadership of the world. You see that in that, um, what is it, that cogs or whatever, um, seven or whatever that I forget what the name the big climate change thing that's going on right now where they're all getting together and doing their big 10 commandments of climate basically earth worship okay and yes one of the big leaders of the climate movement is Charles and so just go check that stuff out pray about it and and study it on your own and uh, don't I didn't say that that was for sure one way or another but you should look into it and allow the Lord to lead you in any understanding so we see this divine counsel working in both directions. Uh, you remember I mentioned the other week, or my dad, when he was on the program, you remember, he has this belief, he's not saying it's scripture because there's no real text to back it up, but it's what my dad has observed over the years, that it seems like the Bible says specifically that God does nothing uh, first except he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. That's in the book of Amos. And so God has a standard that he doesn't move forward in anything that would surprise you unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets, at the same time. Time, it seems like God holds the devil to the same standard and he's revealing it to his servants, the prophets in front of everybody right now. So here we are. We're in the midst of the end times. Everything's about the supernatural. How can we live longer? You know, how can we beat? How can we cheat death? How can we become transhumanistic? How can we how can we take a serum or or if you notice the movies, it's not just what, you know, like what was the Captain America thing where they injected him with a serum. And then there's the whole other movies where they're either it's a human and a god or little G God and or it's two gods creating whatever. You know, it's all back to Genesis chapter six. Have you noticed that everything in these movies are the counterfeit to actually what happened in Genesis chapter six? And so the devil is trying to do that. And so here we are at the end times and people, listen, they're nervous and they're afraid and they're worried. Listen, it's it, we've all been faced with what happens that just like Babylon, they went to bed under one king one night. They woke up the next morning, brand new leadership Their Their kingdom had been conquered through the night. Folks, we're going to wake up one morning and it's going to be supernaturally changed. And I'm talking about Holocaust, nuclear Holocaust and all kinds of things we are going to see some crazy things change in this country according to revelation chapter 18 and and uh jeremiah 51 what's coming to this country is going to be horrible and we need to be prepared but it reminds me of that story and i love this story second kings chapter 6 um starting in verse 8 then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. <clears throat> and the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and warmed him of to, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto him, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So here the king of Syria, he's angry. He's mad because every time he's planning an attack, Elisha, the servant of God, tells the king of Israel what's going on, and he's able to avoid this and not and, and be able to get around it. And so the king of Syria is convinced that he's got a mole inside of his organization. So he's like, who, who is, who's for the king of, who's giving him this information? So one of his servants comes up in verse 12, and this is what he says. None, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel, the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. 
So here he's saying, listen, king, you don't have anybody that's against you. Nobody here's on the side of the king of Israel. It's Elisha. He hears what you're saying even in your bed. When the door's closed, he knows what you're saying. You see, God is in control even when the enemy is planning his attack. Verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, alas, my master, how shall we do? So here, remember now, he sends him down. He's angry. He sends him to surround the city. And here Elisha's servant sees what's going on, right? And he, he's thinking, oh, my goodness, this is it. We're toast. It's over for us. This is it. I mean, for the in Elisha's servant's eyes, he's in the last day. It's done. But Elisha was not worried about it. Elisha wasn't afraid. Listen to what he says. And he answered, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So now he tells him, say, listen, you need to understand something here because you have no idea because you don't understand yet the supernatural. You don't know who it is that is with us right now. Elisha was trying to school his servant that his relationship with the Almighty was not yet at the place it needed to be. Because when you're in the last days and you're walking right with the king, you will be revealed the supernatural in this world of what's going on. God will share his heart and things that are happening. And this is what happens right here. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, the eyes of the young man. And he saw and behold, mountain, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So here we have Elisha and his servant, right? They were afraid. He was afraid, excuse me, a servant. But Elisha, out of mercy, prays that the Almighty would open his servant's eyes to the fiery chariots and the armies of God that were lining the mountaintops. Lord, open our eyes to the supernatural protection for your people in these last days, Lord. It was a moment when everything around them said, this is it. But because Elisha knew his father in heaven and he understood the supernatural, he was prepared to face the unthinkable and he was prepared to conquer the unconquerable because he understood who it was that was with him and the army that protected him in that hour. And folks, I'm here to tell you that in the last days, God has a way to protect his people. Will there be those who are going to be martyrs? Absolutely. But that's a call that God will make. That's his choice, not ours. There will not, you know, there will be those who lay down their lives, but there will be those who don't. And when God has one of his servants lay down his lives, I'm telling you what, God will take care of that person. He doesn't forget to those whom sacrifice everything. And the Bible says the greatest love anyone has ever had is the one that lays down his life for his friend, for another person. That's the greatest act of love, which Jesus did for us. And here we are at the same place as Elisha was. We're at the last days, a place where if God doesn't come soon, we will actually destroy ourselves. Watch that video Brother Benjamin just had on those that are suddenly dying. He posted it from Stu Peters there. I'll probably just, you know, pray the Lord keeps this show from getting flagged anymore on YouTube. Um, but 
we see here that our children are becoming corrupted in this world. The world is full of wickedness. Uh, we're just reading the other day. I don't know if you saw that the the senior level engineer from Google who was talking about that Google's artificial intelligence has begun to develop its own feelings. It has become a sentient being that is starting to have feelings and asking questions that are uh, something that it's not necessarily programmed to ask that depth of a question. And Google has been dabbling in that which they should not. And you might be saying, well, that's, brother, how could that be that a computer could could develop its own artificial could become its own person folks let me ask you a question how is it possible that a statue is going to speak in the last days huh if the devil can possess or make his voice come forward do you not think the devil can get into technology i would I'd try to i'd argue with you he's already in technology and this is a way he will bring forth all kinds of stuff that he will use to harm God's people in these last days. So here that engineer, he's interviewed again the other week, and he refuses to change his story. This isn't some kook, some crazy nut job. This is one of their senior engineers. This guy is highly intelligent, and he's trying to blow the whistle and tell what's happening. But what happens? The media, of course, destroys him. They don't want the truth to get out, that they're tracking all kinds of stuff that's going on. Listen, it's it's terrible out there. Well, if we understand what the devil is going to do in the supernatural and we understand what God's going to do, none of this should surprise us at all. They desire to know everything that we are doing so that they have a profile of everything that we are thinking and they can understand our next move across our digital footprints, whether in front or behind a VPN, they can build a database to understand what you like to search, what you want to look at, and what are your thoughts. Folks, we need to pull in close now to the Lord. They've already proven that Google can sway elections and it's not politi it's not the politics, it's the power of the technology of Google and Facebook and Twitter and all these different things that are able to see into people's or get into people's psyches by projecting certain things in the way they de it's not just how they have ads, it's the way they deliver the ads. I think I saw this thing they were talking about young people today between the ages of like, I don't know what it was, 7 and 13, something ridiculous amount. Like 70% of them are so worried about the climate right now. Yes, all they care about is the creation. They don't care two hoots about the creator. Wars are raging all over this world. We are now being threatened as a nation. We've lost our superpower status in this world. We are not going to make Babylon great again, folks. Our enemies are emboldened. Our churches have been judged. And look how, I mean, if you don't think the churches in America have been judged, they're both, they're, folks, they're, most of them are half their size post the pandemic. Our society is so morally bankrupt. Our children are being taught by transgenders in every super, you know, unbiblical way in the schools now. It's just, it's out of control. Our churches should be awake and warning the people about what's going on, but instead they are preaching the same sermons over and over again. But folks, there is good news. And the good news, because I told you, it's when the darkness, I've shared this all the time on this program, folks, we always know that we grow the most in the midst of tribulation and trials, but it is in the midst of darkness is when God's light will begin to shine brightly. God's people will begin to shine brightly in supernatural ways, and it's going to forth and it's going to set this world on fire because the Lord has a mission for us to share the good news. Jesus is coming again. If the Lord saved the best wine for last and better works than even he did, we are going to do. Isn't that amazing? Our God is so humble that he'd rather us work even mightier works. I mean, who does that? Only the most powerful being in the universe who is so humble 
It just blows, blows my mind. But listen, it's in the book of Isaiah that talks about what's going to happen to God's people during the darkest hours of earth's history. Check this out. Isaiah chapter 60, arise, shine forth for thy light, excuse me, arise, shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. This is amazing. But when does it happen? Here's the answer. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to thy brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Hallelujah. The, this is going to happen in the darkest times of earth's history. Now, yes, you could say some of the Gentiles, they came when Jesus after his death in the early church. But we know that this is this verse four lets us know that this is for the last time. Or excuse me, verse three uh, and four. It says, because their sons in verse four and daughter, they're going to their sons shall come from afar and their daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Now, if you remember the book of Ezekiel chapter 14. I love it. It's great. It's where God goes through the, he starts talking about all four of his sword judgments. He goes through them one at a time. It's like famine, sword, pestilence, noisome beasts. Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's roughly it. And he goes through them and he, it, it, as he goes through each one of the judgments one at a time, he says, though, even Noah, Daniel, or Job were alive, they couldn't deliver any sons or daughters, only themselves through their own righteousness, meaning their own lives, their own walk with God was only thing that could deliver them. They would not see sons and daughters delivered. Then after he goes through all four of them, one at a time, he gets down to verse 21. And in verse 21, it gets amazing. Listen to what it says. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you and you shall see their way and their doings and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when they sh see their when you shall see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord. So here God is saying, when all hell breaks loose. Yes, I went through all the four different judgments one at a time. And Daniel and Noah and Job, they couldn't deliver any sons and daughters, only themselves. But when I let everything fall apart at once, when you see the worst time, when the gross darkness will cover the earth, when you see everything falling apart, then you are going to see sons and daughters delivered because God is going to do his greatest works at the very end of time. But here's the interesting thing he says. I don't know if you picked it up here, what he said. He said, you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall be, and they shall comfort you when you shall see their ways and their doings. You shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord. Remember I said we grow in trials, in tribulation. Sometimes God has to let everything fall apart in our lives in order to wake us up. Which one of you parents wouldn't do anything to save your child? You would do anything. You'd take a bullet for him. You wouldn't think twice about it. Your heavenly father would do the same thing. He already did it when he sent his son, Jesus, to die. And yes, he would do whatever it takes. And so God's saying is he's going to say, you'll see that all the things that happened, they weren't in vain. There was a purpose behind him that everything I did was for an absolute reason because he loved us so much that he wasn't willing to let us walk into hell. If he had to take us in a wheelchair, he was going to get us into the kingdom because it's better to wheel into the kingdom than to walk right into hell.
It's better to go blind into the kingdom than to have both eyes going into hell. And God is going to do whatever it takes to save his children. And we will say, Lord, everything you did, it was good. It was just, there was purpose behind it. There was a reason for it. And we will be thankful when we see sons and daughters delivered. Folks, the greatest thing we've ever experienced is yet to come. I'm not talking about worldwide revival where the earth turns around and starts suddenly worshiping God. That'll only happen at the end when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I'm talking about revival within the people where we begin to follow our God and we begin to follow him in holiness and righteousness and doing the things that he wants us to do so that we can save a dying world. Your God is supernatural, folks, and he works in supernatural ways. And that's why the devil is counterfeiting everything that is supernatural in this hour. We need to be awake. You are here. This is your life and your purpose. And it's to serve our Lord and to share the good news of Jesus' second coming and understand that his glory is about to be revealed. My question, though, to you, dear believer, are you ready to receive his glory? See, I'm so sick, and I mentioned this a while ago. I think it was a couple months ago. I'm so sick of talking about preparing for the last days. You know what? I want to be just prepared. No longer preparing, prepared. And God wants us prepared. Elisha was prepared. Yes, he spent time in the trenches. He spent time with Elijah. He he spent time, you know, seeking the Lord. But when it all hit the fan, he was prepared and he understood the power of his God. Folks, there is not a world a revival coming to revive the United States, but there will be revival amongst God's people. Revival through persecution, revival through the trenches of these last days, revival when all the gross darkness fills this earth, that bright lights will shine through God's people so that we can finish the work that he has set us about to do because he uses people. We see how he works in a divine council and he's working with us in these moments at the close of earth's history. Folks, get ready. Your God's about to reveal his glory and we want to receive it. Father, in the name above every name, Yeshua Jesus, I pray that we would be ready and willing and able by your grace and mercy to receive your glory, Father. Forgive us for all the sins and the failures, Lord, that we've we've had that so we can cast off this in this last hour, Lord, and receive your glory to work for you. Lord, not for riches, not for wealth, not for gain, but to work for your honor and the respect and the love that you so deserve, Lord. We pray that you would bless us to receive this in Jesus' name. This is Brother Frank on the Remnant Call. Send everybody good night and shalom. Trumpet in Zion